Good morning, uh, Madam Chairwoman and, and the board. Uh, my name is Susie Israel. I am a lawyer with the Public Defender's Office in San Bernardino County, but um, I am speaking today briefly on behalf of uh, the California Public Defenders Association. Um, I, first of all, I want to um, applaud the uh, proponents panel, the, the young woman who, who came and testified and spoke their story. Um, I thought that was very brave. And um, I appreciate that. And I also appreciate the fact that human trafficking is a problem that needs to be addressed. Um, however, the, uh, the CASE Act, as it is written, is entirely, um, it's overbroad and it does not address the real issues that can help prevent human trafficking. Um, just at, for example, it, within the law itself, it gives extraordinarily broad definitions of coercion. Um, Could you speaks, again pull the microphone a little closer? It's okay. hard to hear. Thank up you. Here, anyway. Um, it, it speaks of the quote deprivation or violation of the personal liberty of another. Um, the, the courts have been struggling with 200 years over the definitions of, of you know personal liberties, and for the proponents to. To state that the that this law will help clear up the existing laws and make them more more uniform and understandable is is I believe a misstatement. Um, I think this is just the the law as it is written makes it rife with uncertain uncertainty and will certainly encourage litigation. Um, also, for example. Uh, so the definition of serious harm uh, within this, it, quote, includes psychological, financial, or reputational harm to compel a reasonable person to perform acts to avoid that harm. Um, how, how, is, how is that going to be legislated and interpreted? Um, the force or fraud um, language, which would, be, which would cause this crime to... Uh, uh, be a life sentence for sex trafficking of a minor. When I hear the, the women speak about what they went through, it seems that they necessarily were subjected to force or fraud to even enter into that this life. Um, you know, it appears that these young girls don't do this willingly. Um, what I fear is that any prosecution under this uh, law will be a life sentence. There won't be any prosecutions uh, under the, the eight-year statute, I think every defendant, every accused is going to face a life sentence for this. Um, and additionally, this law pre um, creates evidence provisions, which basically shuts down any effective cross-examination uh, by the defense attorney. Um, that, you know, the, the witnesses who are speaking, who are testifying against, we are not allowed to, to cross-examine them at all or to, you know, or to present an effective defense. Um, additionally, this law specifically prohibits certain defenses, such as not knowing the actual age of the, of the person, I think, uh, of the victim, if they're under 18 or not. Um, and I think that would be a very viable avenue as a defense attorney to examine, and we would not be allowed to do that. The uh, the other aspects of the law of concern are the 290 registration, which was discussed earlier. Um, I believe currently one in 157 males in the state of California are currently uh, registrants. If we place additional burdens on them, requiring the the internet. Uh, information to be provided to the police. First of all, I don't believe there's any empirical evidence that would suggest that that would help um, enforcement. And the empirical evidence does suggest that the more burdensome that sex registration is, the less likely these registrants are going to conform to it. The whole point of 290 registration is to is for law enforcement to know where these people are so they can keep tabs on them. And the more people that you have dropping out, the less you can keep tabs on them. Um, the last thing I would, would like to, to point out, um, on the proponent's uh, fact page, they had um, referenced, referenced some studies that show what you need to do to effectively reduce human trafficking. Um, they had uh, they had pointed to a study um, 
that the, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation had uh, given a grant to the International Justice Mission and created Project Lantern. And what they did is they went to the Philippines, um, where this is a huge problem, and they and they um, figured out what worked. And according to the study, what did work was educating the police about this problem, getting this issue onto the public radar, um, providing aftercare to the uh, rescued sex workers. Um, they, the women uh, on the panel before me had spoken of how they were treated as the criminals, and they were arrested, and they were given nothing, given nothing, you know, after they were, you know, quote rescued, and and giving these women the power to have a, a future life, and giving the women the power to. Um, to speak against their accusers was uh, was highly effective. Um, educating about the prosecution about the pertinent legal concepts um, that was a, a huge factor in this um, in this project. Only there was only a passing mention of changing the laws in this project. In fact, a few municipalities did enhance their their forfeiture. Um, proceedings or past resolutions dealing with this issue, but there, but in the, Philippi the Philippines, they dramatically reduced the human trafficking, and only very little of it, if any, was due to the enhanced penalties. Uh, the uh, the assistant uh, DA from Alameda County who, who spoke before me did indicate that there are laws on the books, and it is. Um, her opinion that this would, you know, tie the laws together. Um, well, I, there are laws on the book that, on the books that effectively address this if the prosecuting agencies choose to address them. Um, Alameda County um, has the the benefit of getting grant money and um, a very de obviously a very dedicated and motivated district attorney who is effectively prosecuting these cases. Uh, there. They had spoken about how the gangs are getting involved in this now. If it's a gang crime, there are gang enhancements. Um, in fact, it's a life enhancement for gang extortion or witness threats, which could certainly um, be parlayed into human trafficking crimes. There are conspiracy laws that exist. Um, there's the aiding and abetting theory. Uh, which, as you probably know, you don't have to be the person who does the actual act, but if you aid and abet that act, you are just as liable. Um, the natural and probable consequences theory. If you do something that it's natural and probable to believe that it results in a crime being committed, you are liable for that. Um, and out that we're going to have 10 minutes for each and, person. And, so I, time is and that was up. my last um, observation. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.